I am Martha Van Burkle, and this is SEO in 2024. Martha, what's your number one SEO tip for 2024? It's really about the shift of starting to think about schema markup as your language to build a knowledge graph and not just go after rich results, but instead really, really focus on being understood by these new AI engines, not just search engines, but AI large language models. So do these large language models, does AI understand your content in a slightly different way and mean that that your schema market markup have to be slightly different um, compared with what it was before? I think we really have to think about sort of translating it truly to be understood. And, And this is sort of the difference of when people did schema markup to date, they really focused on trying to get that rich result, trying to make sure that you're hitting just the minimum of required and recommended from Google. So like elements of the page that you had to translate. Now we need to actually think about, well, what is this page about? And how do we make sure it's truly understood? How does it connect to other things in the world and on the web? How does it relate to other things across the brand? So we're going now for like comprehensive translation versus sort of like minimum. And and this is the the reason why this is important is the large language models are trying to do inferencing. They're trying to understand the searcher or the person they're interacting's intent. In order for them to do that, to get the inferencing, they have to have context of more than just like basic pieces, but really the context of like, where does this puzzle piece or this like one piece of content fit in the much bigger picture of all the other things that they've indexed or understood? So how do you fit into this bigger picture? I mean, are you just talk, talking about connecting to your social profiles? Are you talking about having more external links to related websites in your field or something else? Yeah, so let's start with links because I think this is like links today, you know, continue to be something that you need to have. But I, with the schema markup, you can actually have links in context. Let me give you an example. So today, like you have a link on a page, right? So we know where it is. We know how often the link is. You know, Majestic does a great job of illustrating this in their tools. But we don't know what the link is in in context of what that topic of the page is. So if I'm talking about a product, is the link taking me to who like created the product? Is the link taking me to a related product? Is the link taking me to understand more about the accessories of the product? And so with the schema markup, you can sort of like give context of that link. Now, it also brings the context of all the other content on the page. So if you want the page to be understood in a certain way, you know, schema markup, the the vocabulary that's been around since 2011. And by the way, Google and Microsoft collaborated on this together to define all the things that they wanted to know about all the different topics. And so it's really about sort of, you know, bringing context to not just like what is the description or like what I want the description to be, but also like how do we disambiguate? How do we make sure it's absolutely clear what this thing is? And again, sometimes I use the example of, you know, it makes a lot of sense if we're talking about well, this is a this is a page that's talking about all the hotels in Paris, and we want to be clear that we're not talking about Paris, Texas, or Paris, Ontario. We're talking about Paris, France. But you can go much, much deeper than that, especially when you're bringing out products. Let's say that that it's not like it's a new market, and you're trying to really figure out and, and position like where that 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 actually fits. You know, maybe in your marketing language, you're talking about footprints, and you don't really mean footprints in the sand, but you're really talking about carbon footprint because this product's like talking about it in this context. And so it really is a control point for marketers to really make sure that the content they are building that's on the site is truly understood and positioned in the right place, not just by humans, but also by machines. Uh, you talk about um, how Google and Microsoft work together to help create schema. Now, of course, you've got um, Google with search generative experience and Bard. You've got Microsoft um, investing in chat GPT and, and Bing as well and competing against each other for the best quality AI-driven results as well. Uh, is there anything that we have to do differently to try and appear in those different locations? Well, today there's very little documentation with regards to like how SGE works. In fact, you know, I just saw Gary Illis speak and he's like, I'm not allowed to talk about SGE. I would say like one thing that's really great for marketers and digital marketers is is Microsoft is trying to articulate, you know, what do we need to do? And so some basic things that they've really been called as make it easier for us to index your pages, right? Um, So help us understand when things are changing. And I think this also plays to the point of like, you know, we, we need to help them make sure they understand, right? So if they're investing money to make sure that they're crawling the pages so that you have a chance of showing up, 
we also then need to make sure they truly understand it and make it easier to understand it. And if you look at any research around large language models and knowledge graphs, you know, a knowledge graph actually grounds large language models. It removes hallucinations. It provides, I'll say, like a standard structured way for them to do that inferencing with, frankly, less investment and less energy. And so, again, if we think about, like, how do we help them, you know, do what they're trying to do and understand it, like the structured data or the schema markup, and then, again, doing it in a really connected way where you're building a knowledge graph, you know, that will help them achieve their goal faster and cheaper, um, which I think is, like, some of the key messaging we're hearing from the Fabrices and, and others sort of in market. I can certainly understand trying to train AI as effectively as possible to try to ensure that uh, obviously your results uh, appear within what they're offering to their users. But are we not going to get to a stage? I mean, AI is evolving very quickly. Are we not going to get to a stage at some point where it's entirely comfortable with the meaning behind the content on your website, on your web pages, and schema might not even be required in a few years' time? Oh, David, you always ask me the most fun questions, don't you? <laughs> so, so yeah, I think it is a possibility. What's interesting as we work with like mid to large enterprise is that there is a control point that the large that the content creators are going to want to have, right? In fact, I was just speaking to someone today, and they're like, you know, it's kind of scary that we'll not even actually own the experience, right? And this is not just true, sort of with what we're seeing from Google and Bing, but like. Who are the other innovators like in that experience, right? Who are just going to give us the conversion and have it go? And so I'm a believer that, you know, whether we're talking about search or we're talking about marketing overall, the brand is going to want to have some control as to sort of what they're consuming and where they're going. And and frankly, if the experience doesn't exist, then they're going to want a, a marketing data layer. And and so I think the knowledge graph, uh, whether that's using a standard language of schema markup or something else, is going to be a way that especially mid to large enterprise, enterprise is going to be able to kind of have that control point and be able to continue to play and, and tell these AIs how they want to be understood. I could be wrong, but, but that's where I see it play out. Absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, you're going to have to differentiate what you do in some way. And if there are hundreds of other businesses competing in a similar kind of category um, as, yeah. as, as yours, then how are you going to differentiate yourselves and obviously marking up what you do as well as the uniqueness of your content and expertise, authoritativeness yeah. and trust um, is going to have a significant play. So you would like to think that SEO is, is still going to stay hyper relevant. And you say that there's also positions SEO to be a hero in preparing marketing data to broader, broader AI initiatives. So, so what do you mean by that? Well, it's this idea that like just search engines are just one consumer. And I think we, we're so focused on that all the time. But when you actually look at a knowledge graph and how a knowledge graph can be used, it can be used for lots of other things. And, and so what's, I would say, exciting about the, the vocabulary of Schema.org is it's very comprehensive. And, you know, with tools like Schema app, you know, that we've built, it allows you to build a knowledge graph very quickly that then allows the SEO to be the hero to raise their hand within the organizations who are trying to say, how am I going to pull this data together from all of these different places or that are in these different elements? And you can say like, actually, we've done it. We've done it for organic search. And, and we even got indications that of, of this sort of this, this mental model of like, this becomes like a data pipeline, right? That they consume and then you build other applications on. In fact, when Fabrice Cannell um, spoke at PubCon, recently, he talked about how they're not having multiple data sources. They're like pulling in the indexing and pulling in that data all in one piece and then building the services on top. And so we have to think beyond, again, if Bing's doing that in order to deliver a different value, you know, other people can do that too. And so my question is like, what are marketers doing to make sure that they have their data in a really consumable way that allows people to consume it and use it? And, and we're seeing I'll say like, I'll say the innovators within our enterprise clients, like they're already thinking this way and using their knowledge graph as a way to, to inform and accelerate some of the things they're even doing internally. Should SEOs consider turning into analytics professionals? I don't know about analytics professionals, but I think we have to start asking ourselves different questions of like, how do we think again beyond just the click as like one value piece that we're doing? that we need to be thinking more about like the business relevancy on a much bigger piece. Like how do we help the business stay relevant to capture conversions 
um, to get appointments, to, to make sales beyond just, you know, again, how the analytics are today. So I would say like, we need to be thinking of like, what other analytics do we need to be going at? And I would say like conversions is key, right? So as we see more and more of that, I'll say data exploration and research happening off our site or sort of being consumed and, and packaged in other places, the ability to measure conversions is going to be really important. So if your business today is like, oh, we've been struggling to actually measure true conversions, you know, that to me is, is it needs to be where, where SEOs or people in the business are, are asking questions. So it almost sounds like to me as if um, the internal role of SEOs may turn into an SEO consultant as opposed to an SEO manager. Is that fair? Oh, yeah. I think the cross-functional nature of the job is the need for that is accelerating, especially when it comes to content. Because the other big play here is, you know, content, unique content, content that is like truly like tied to your authority and like expertise. And I not don't use those words in like an EEAT kind of fashion, but like truly what are you an expert in and how, you know, why do I need to go to you, to, to our site, to the, the content you're creating? versus anybody else. Like it has to be unique. It has to be well positioned. It has to be something that is worth putting you in that, you know, that initial part of that positioning of answers. And this is more than like, it's almost like you have to be the number one result because otherwise you're just like the the other links aren't going to exit. You said, um, truly, what are you an expert in? Does that also apply to SEOs? Um, Do SEOs actually have to determine, are they wanting to be a technical SEO moving forward? Are they leaning towards the creative side and helping to consult towards creating content that's seen by search engines? Or can the same person do both roles, do you think? I think it depends on their talent, frankly. I think there's going to be a lot more, um, like I said, that col- that that need to be able to connect the dots and explain how these things all come together is going to be more important. Um, so I would say like everyone needs to become a translator. <laughs> And I don't mean in the schema markup standpoint, but just being able to explain if you're a technical SEO, it's not just, oh, you need to just go do index now, but like you need to do index now because if we are costing the search engines too much money, we're not going to even get the chance to play. And therefore, you know, like being able to tie it back to the business. So I think whatever role you're in, whether it be content or technical SEO or in analytics, you need to be able to think four steps ahead about how your your people in your team and how this all comes back to like how the business achieves their primary goal. And I think that's going to become more and more important. People aren't going to just be like, oh, I build links. It's like, why do you build links? Like, how is that going to play in this space? And like, you know, how is that evolving? So if you're an SEO working in a relatively large organization and you do want to reach out to more people, more marketing departments and other people in the business, how do you go about articulating the value of schema to non-technical or even non-marketers? So today, a lot of what we're talking about is, is how things are changing. And then we're trying to break down as well how, I'll say like large language models. So people are, you know, even even my mother knows what a large language model is these days because of chat GPT and so forth. And I think if you can understand, I will say the the landscape of like, well, we want to play here, right? And we want to be understood here. And that sort of, you know, someone in, in content can understand that, someone in the business can understand that, a sales leader can understand that. And then I often refer to schema markup, again, as the language. Like historically, we've had t-shirts that it's like, this is the language of search engines. I now talk more about like, this is the language of machines, right? And AI, and this is the language that you can articulate, you know, what it is that we mean about. And so I think it's then sort of saying like, we need to translate things so that this is truly understood. And that's this practice we're doing around schema markup. And now it's not just about like a page by page piece, but how are we telling the whole interwoven story, which again, we then talk about like a knowledge graph. It's really explaining how all these things are connected because just like humans, like we don't just like read one piece of content and move on to the next, right? We read a piece of content and it makes us think of the related things. You know, even when we talk, we're trying to find commonalities and things we can connect on, whether that be children, whether that be things that we love about our work in SEO, whether that be companies we work for. And so like, that's like how the neural brain works. And so when we're explaining these things, like how the machine's neural brains works is not so different from us, right? It's about that meaningful connections about pieces. And so I think if you can tie that like changing journey to sort of this like control point or vocabulary that we have to explain and speak to machines, 
And then knowing that we're all trying to find these connections in order to kind of, you know, I'll say like experience and both like make decisions. That's how I would explain it and get people bought in. If an SEO is struggling for time, what should they stop doing right now so they can spend more time thinking about connecting schema in 2024? Yeah. So I think like just stop writing really generic content, right? Like if you're doing things that like aren't very differentiated, that is just the basics, you know, put that aside and, and go deep, like go into like figuring out how you can articulate what you have today using schema markup so that you can tell the story, make sure that really unique content standing out. Arthur Van Berko is CEO at Schema App and you can find her over at schemaapp.com. Martha, thanks so much for being part of SEO in 2024. Thanks for the opportunity. I've been your host, David Bain. Get your copy of SEO in 2024, the book, over at seoin2024.com. <laughs>